Hiya. Hello. Welcome to the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Dammy, also known as Dammy's Doodles. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Wednesday the 7th of September 2016, and this is episode 208. We'd like to say a big welcome back. We love you guys to all our returning viewers, and a big hiya to any new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. We hope you enjoy the show. Um, Danny, we had several people introduce themselves in the Ravelry group this week, so why don't you give them a shout out? Okay. Joe, who is Joe Violi from Germany. Genevieve, who is Jen Duana from Quebec, Canada. Kim, who is VT Kimmy Kim from West Virginia. Karen, who is Karen's One from California. Alyssa, who, uh, and Alyssa, who is AA Lauzon from Massachusetts. Welcome. We're glad to have you. Thanks for introducing yourselves. So, Dami, if somebody's not a member of our Ravelry group, what should they do and why? You should join and introduce yourself in our introduction thread because you will get a shout-out on our next episode and you will be able to participate in all our cows and giveaways. That's right. Well, we have quite a lot to cover today. We have a whole basket full of prizes to give away. Um, we've got a review. And we're going to have to record in a couple of tries because I have a doctor's appointment this afternoon. So we're going to record as much as we can before I have to leave and then afterwards we'll record the rest. I mean obviously it won't impact y'all at all because you won't know but we'll know. Okay? And it's like everyone in the whole world is doing construction outside our window and cleaning in the hallway of our flat building. So apologies for any ambient noise. It feels like they've been working for like 30 years today. So all right, well, we should get started. Here we go. Now we're going to talk about what's on our needles. So what is on your needles, Dammy? I can't show you. Okay. So I'm work I'm again back to working on the So Say We All Secretly socks. On the US 1.5, 2.5 millimeters in third vault yarns librarian sock in a secret colorway. Um, so this is for a kit that I'm doing with Lola of Third Vault Yarns and Sam of Knit Run Dick Project Bags. Stay tuned for the end of the episode because we're taking a poll about this kit. So stay tuned. Okay? Um, Alright, are you working on anything else? No. Okay. So what are you working on? Um, I'm continuing to work on my 10 stitch zigzag blanket, which is a pattern by Frankie Brown. I'm on US 4, 3.5 mil needles, and the yarn I'm using right now is... Mint Rain hand dyed yarns in the Tough Sock base in the Zombie Love colorway. And I think I should have that stripe finished by the time we record next week. And I'm thinking I need to like look and see what fall colors I have in my box of yarn. Um, because it takes almost three weeks to do a stripe. So I should start in on some fall stuff soon. And then next up after that is my Epic Haven Poncho, which is a pattern by Holly Yo on US 8's 5 mil needles. And like again, like I told you last week, I um, made some modifications. I'm doing garter stitch instead of reverse stockinette, and I'm using 8 colorways instead of 5, and I changed the needle size. But I'm over 25% done. Okay, so starting over here is um, Rainbow Heirloom Solo Light in the Hidden Reef colorway. And then the next one is Sidegart Side Kurtig in the Butterfly colorway. And then the pink that I'm doing right now is, where is it? Malabrigo Yarn Sock in the Light of Love colorway. So I'm getting close to being done with this section. And then I will, because you hold um, the yarn doubled. Um, but as you transition from colors, you do one skein of the old color or one skein of the new color. Strand. So, what did I say? Skein. Oh, strand. Yes, strand. Um, so I'll be holding a strand of this Malabrigo with Yarn par Pony Show, show Pony Four Ply in the Rosa colorway, which is like a kind of a brownish mauve colorway. So... Um, yeah, so I'm making good progress on that. Um, I finished all the buttonholes on it, so now it's just um, knitting and garter until I ran out of yarn, pretty much. So, And then the third thing I have on the needles, this is almost a half-finished object, um, are Dammy's birthday socks. 
Um, and this is from my French Vanilla Cappuccino Sock Pattern on Ravelry. And I'm using US 1.5 2.5 mil needles, my 9 inch Zoom Zooms. And this yellow, this yarn, this, yeah, I don't know what word I was trying to say. This yarn is West Yorkshire Spinner Signature 4 Ply, their cocktail collection in the Passion Fruit Cooler colorway. So I am doing the ribbing right now. Uh, in fact, let's see how many rows have I done of ribbing. Seven, and I normally do 12 so this will probably be off the needles at some point today and then I will cast on the second one and that's everything I'm working on yay yay uh, I'm, I mean I'm like trying to really push through on the poncho I want to like because mm -hmm. I want to have it done before before Nanny Swemo starts in November, mm -hmm. which I think is totally doable. So, um, yeah, so I'm just pushing through on that. All right, well, we have some finished projects to talk about, so we should move on. And now we're going to talk about our finished projects. And you have one, so please tell us. Yay. I finished my Optical Delusion Conflagration Scarf by Kim McBrien Evans. And the pattern said I needed 10 grams for the last repeat, but I only used like three. So you could have done another repeat. Of the middle chart. Yeah, that's a bummer. So I used uh, US 2.5, 3 millimeters, and Easy Knits Deeply Wicked in the Wick way so now it needs to be blocked yeah but you've got to pin it out so um, I have to figure out a place to do that that is not directly in our walkway so all right well did you finish anything else no so what did you finish I finished a couple things first up I finished my stars and stripes and nutcrackers oh my socks this is also from my French vanilla cappuccino sock pattern um, which is available on Ravelry and what I did is I just kept knitting in a uh, stockinette in the round and then bound off using Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off um, just in knit. Um, I used US 1.5 2.5 mil needles and the yarn is the Uncommon Thread Tough Sock in the Nutcracker colorway and Abby Grasso Self Striping Sock in the Stars and Stripes colorway. So there's that. There's that. I like how they turned out. Yep. What do you think? Yeah. No, there you go. What? No, they're yours. No, I made them for you. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. You made them for you. No, I made them for you. No, you. You made them for you. No, I really this did. This is the second time you've given me socks on the podcast. You're just like here. Them. Yes, because I made them for you. You made them for you. No, I didn't. I made them for you. It was a secret. You didn't know I was making them for you. Thank you. You're welcome. They need to be blocked still and photographed, so yes. you can't wear them yet. What a nice gift. I know. <laughs> Here, have some socks. Don't wear them. Well, I mean, we just ever. need to... Ever. No, you can wear them ever. Just need to soak them and put them on mannequin feet so that I can photograph them for my project page and then the other thing I finished is this week's preemie hat this is number 36 for the year which means I think I have 16 to go um, this is from my free top-down preemie hat pattern on Ravelry I'm on US 6's 4 mil needles and the yarn is Robin Chunky in the Claret colorway and West Yorkshire Spinners Air Valley Erin in the light brown colorway and I tried really hard to use up both of these yarns and I have like two grams <laughs> left of both of them so they'll probably end up being a, st a stripe in another hat so but there's that and that's everything I finished this week yay, yay. all right well let's move on to the next segment and now it's time for our favorite part of the show yummies what are yummies Dammy? yummies are our current favorite things things we like things we want to talk to you about yummies so only really two things today First up, I wanted to talk about blocking my Arcaform cardigan because it was epic. It, it's long. It's down past my knees. It's heavy because it's a bulky weight yarn. So some people gave me some um, thoughts and ideas and such. And so what I ended up doing, I soaked it. I used um, some soak wash in it 
and a color catcher because the pink bled like crazy. So I soaked it just like I normally would do. And then we squeeze the water out of it and that's when it's good to have uh, the hubs because he actually took it to the bathtub and, and, and squeezed the water out of it because I just, I didn't have enough strength to do that. And then we put it into our washer and ran the spin cycle only, spin cycle only, which is an 800 RPM spin cycle. We did it twice, so a total of 16 minutes. And that got most of the water out of it. And then I laid it out to dry on top of one of our clothes drying racks. And I just checked it throughout the day and kind of moved it so it wouldn't have any weird lumps from hanging over the edge of the drying rack or anything. And that's it. And that's what I did. Now my disclaimer is that worked for me. So, you know, use your own judgment in, in blocking things like that because you don't want to put something in the washer and have something agitate it because that'll felt it. So, but I had asked about it on the podcast, so I just wanted to share my experience on that one. So now I just need to wait for it to be cold enough to wear it. Mm -hmm. Second thing about my Arcaform is I was trying to figure out what kind of closure I wanted because in the picture I showed y'all last week, I had a shawl pin on, but it was the big wooden three ring one with the thing. And I wear a crossbody bag when I go out and I didn't, I was worried about that much bulk with the bag running across it and so I looked at some other options um, and finally ended up ordering from Kettle Yarn Co. Uh, this is from Linda and it just came today. I ordered this shawl pen. This is Ba, B-A-A, -A, the sheep, Ba. And it will just run through the front and it, since it's not very it's not super thick like the wooden one is. It shouldn't agitate it when I wear the crossbody bag. Bah. You cannot have bah. <laughs> She's trying to do the reflex thing. So bah, bah. Do you have any yummies that we forgot to put in the thing? I made you listen to Finding Neverland. Oh, that's right. We should, you should put it I in. I bugged her about it all week. Yeah. So we listened to it. We listened to it over two nights. We listened to act one and then we listened to act two. Um, you should put that in the show notes so that we can link to it. I don't, I don't know. It's been a pretty quiet week around here. I'm just still trying to recover from surgery. And so it's just been a pretty quiet week. Oh, you had pumpkin spice. I did have pumpkin spice couple of times. Well, you didn't tell the people what you thought of Finding Neverland. Oh, I liked mm -hmm. it. It was good. It was good. Um, Kelsey Grammer. I love him. He's so good. And um, then it had Matthew Morrison from Glee in it. Is there anybody else that I'm not thinking of that I should know? I don't think so. So, yeah. So that was pretty fun. All right. Well, then let's talk about Hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. What is it? It stands for Geeky Girls Knit Crafty Photo a Day Challenge. We have a list of prompts for each month. So you take a picture related to the prompt for that day, post it anywhere you like, but we pick our favorites from Instagram. That's right. So um, September's prompt list has a lot of stuff about planning for autumn and, you know, back to school type stuff and things like that. So, so what are we about to show them? Two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked. So here come the photos. So those are our favorite photos. It's never too late to join in. Just take a look at the prompt for today, which when we're recording this, today's prompt is friends. I'm not sure what I'm gonna post. But uh, take a picture and you can um, 
interpret the prompt however you want. Post it on Instagram. Make sure you use the hashtag GGKCraftyPad um, because that's how we find your photos and yours might get chosen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk to them about upcoming events we'll be attending. Um, we will be vending at the Yarn Emporium in London on Saturday the 5th and Sunday the 6th of November, that's right. which is two months from now, that's more right. or less. Yeah. Um, so this is an event hosted by Yarn in the City. Did you tell them who we're vending with? No. Okay. With Sam of Knit Run Digs and Lola of Knit Run Dig and Lola of Third Vault Yarns. That's right. Um, so you should definitely plan to come um, shop if you are in that area. Uh, and we highly encourage you to do Yarn Porium and then do some sightseeing and then come to the Geeky Puffin Knitpalooza, which is a knitting retreat that we're co-hosting um, from Thursday the 10th of November to Sunday the 13th of November in Farnham, England, which is about 50 miles southwest of London. We do have some spaces still available if you're interested. We've also opened our class some extra class spots up to the uh, for the public so um to sign up or to get more details go to geekypuffinknitpalooza.com that's right and yeah we hope that you will join us because we're gonna have lots of fun things going on all right i think we are ready to move on to the next segment <laughs> Now we're going to talk about what we're reading and watching. So what are you reading? Um, since I like Finding Neverland so much, I'm just like, I should read, I, sh I should like actually read Peter Pan, so I'm reading Peter Pan or The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up by J.N. Barry. Okay. Do you have anything to say about it, other than what you've said? No. Okay. Um, I'm still reading Coming Back to God When You Feel Empty, Whispers of Restoration from the Book of Ruth by Tanya Marlowe. I only have one chapter left of it, so. And I'm also still reading Present Over Perfect, Leaving Behind Frantic for a Simpler, More Soulful Way of Living by Shauna Nyquist. I don't have that much more to go and I don't want it to end because it's so good. This happens with a lot of books you read. Uh, it just means I'm gonna have to read it again, I guess. It's really good. I highly recommend it. And then fiction-wise, some of what I've been reading is the Elise Sandberg series by Anne Frazier. Um, it was a detective, but I don't know how to describe it. Um, what happened in it? I don't even know how to describe it. My brain is like whew, done for today. Um, yeah, it was a detective with a twist. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a drink. Yeah. Margarita on the rocks. Okay. Okay. So what have we been watching? I thought you would want to talk about that. Oh, okay. We've been watching Brain Dead season one. We're caught up to the current. The best part is previously on Brain Dead. And then they sing what happened. Except for in the last episode, they tells us what happened in Gunsmoke. Yeah. Uh, I think we only have three episodes left, right? Or is there only two? Two, two episodes. Dark Matter, that's the one we have three left. Um, so yeah, so we'll finish that up next week. So so we started rewatching something else. Uh, season one of Fringe. I love Fringe. It's such a good show. And it's been so long since we watched it that I don't remember all the detail. I mean, like, I know, like, the scope of what happens, but are you enjoying it? Yeah. Yeah. Your favorite character is? Astrid. Yep. Because what's her real name? Jessica Nicole. She's on Ravelry. She's a knitter. We're also rewatching Gilmore Girls. We mm -hmm. finished season one and we're into season two. Jess has arrived. Mm -hmm. Yes, and Lorelai called off the wedding to Max. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
I love Gilmore Girls. It's my favorite. The Hubs and I are rewatching Numbers. We finished season three and now we're into season four. We had like a marathon yesterday because you were going to babysit. So we had a Numbers marathon because our regular shows haven't started back yet. Some of them will start back this month though. Yep. Yep. And you want to talk about the next one? Um, we're watching season two of Dark Matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't remember what happened. Oh, it was the thing that the android was um, was causing them to like hallucinate. Remember? We're so we are recording out of order because we tried to record some of the shorter stuff before I went to go to my doctor's appointment, and now I'm home, and I'm exhausted, and so we're trying to get through. Um, and the hubs and I watched the series finale of Rizzoli and Isles last night. And I cried through the whole thing. It didn't help matters that all the actors were crying too. And they did, remember how I said last week that I was really hoping they would do something um, to honor Lee Thompson Young who played Barry? Um, they did, it was very sweet. The, the robot action figure thing that had been sitting on, that had sat on Barry's desk and then it sat on Jane's desk. And then Jane, as she was getting ready to leave, gave it to Frankie to have on his desk. She said she felt like it needed to stay there. It was so sweet. But there was so much emotion, and oh, that was such a good show. Such a good show. And that's everything we're reading and watching. So now we're going to time travel and go do some other segments. We'll be back. And now it's time for our June, July, and August summertime, and the living is easy. Cow. And it's over. And so, first up, Dammy, why don't you tell us who finished projects in the final, I guess it was the final day or two, <laughs> from the time we recorded last. So, Bolt Cupcakes, Collie in Stitch Girl, Crack Off times three, Crouching Cheese, Deb Knits two, Kersey S, Knit by Moonlight 89 times 2, Little Angel SG2, Manda B, Missy K Schmidt, Mother Z, Mystic Stormy, Natalu Kathleen times 2, Piper's Mom, Pocketses times 16, P O K D E J, Rainbow Ange, Ramona Firehorse times 4, Sarah Jane McKelvey, and Twiddling Sister. Great job, y'all. All right, so we have lots of prizes to award, and so we have uh, we did the random number um, drawing off air so it wouldn't take as long because there's so many prizes. So, um, for most of this stuff, I'm looking to make sure. For all but one thing, I need, if you're the winner, I need you to PM me on Ravelry, give me your full name and mailing address so that I can get this out in the post to you. There is one winner of a pri of a pattern collection, and I'll tell you that in a few minutes. So let's start with this. So this was donated by Kelly, who is Kelly Cron on Ravelry. This is a skein of Gnome Acres House Gnome in the Stars Hollow colorway. Yay, Gilmore Girls! I have a skein up here somewhere, right there, that I'm gonna knit up too. So Dammy, who is the winner of this? Bubby's Mom 77. Congratulations. PM me. All right, and then next up, also donated by Kelly, we have um, the the company that made this is That Semi Faro Girl, and it's a Wonder Woman project bag, drawstring project bag. It's really cute. And who is the winner of that? Jessie's Girl 84. Yay! All right, now for this one, I'm trying to get to these. There are, um, we have... From Boga of Knitting in France, we have three different stitch marker uh, sets. We have um, apples. We have pink biscuits. Pop tarts. And we have blue tulips. So if you are one of the three winners, when you send me your name and mailing address, I need you to rank from one to three which ones you want the most. So there's apples, pink biscuits, and blue tulips. And first person to contact me will get their number one, and then the next person will get the next highest till we get all three. So, Dammy, who are the three winners of this? 
Army Tink 08, Bolt Cupcakes, and AZ Nitwit. Yes, so congratulations. Make sure you tell me an order, or if you um, if you don't have a preference, you can say that too, and I'll just send you what whatever there is. Next up, um, from Catherine, who is Kex Kremelchen of Blue Cookie Designs, she donated a, um, a copy, an ebook copy of her nine pattern. How do you say it? Cybingabirga collection. So uh, if you're the winner of this, I just need you to PM me to tell me you saw this, and then I'll get Catherine to gift it to you. So who is the winner? L. McCall. Yay, congrats. Okay, now let's see. I need to find. There it is. From Julia, who is Nimrus on Ravelry of Pandia's Jewels, she donated a set of her Outlander stitch markers. They're so cute. Who is the winner of this? Phoenix Fire. Congrats. Um, and then also, oh, this is another, I'm sorry, this is the other one that is a digital prize. So Julia, who is Nimrus of Pandia's Jewels, also donated a copy of her new Gypsy Moss shawl pattern. So who is the winner of this? The Baby Lady 1990. Yes, so I need you just to PM me that you saw this and I'll get Julia to gift it to you. All right, next up from Danielle, who is Gothica 101. She donated several prizes here. We have a set of her Mahogany Obsidian Stitch Markers. Who's the winner of that? Muzzer Z. Congrats. And then next up, let's see this one. Um, from Danielle of Gothica Yarns, we have a skein of her Bonfire Night yarn with a set of Autumn Magic stitch markers. So here's the yarn and the stitch markers together. Who is the winner of that? K2P2 Mama. Congrats. All right, and then another thing from um, Danielle of Gothica Yarns, we have a skein of her yarn in the fantasy colorway and a set of stitch markers, the Blue Sea stitch marker, and it's got a little turtle in it. Who is the winner of this one? Whistlin' Liz. Congrats. All right, and then from us, we have a copy of the super, super fun Exploding Kittens game. It's a card game, and it is so much fun. This is my favorite one. I'm a palindrome. This is Taco Cat. Who is the winner of this fun game? A1 Darwin. Yes, congratulations. And the final prize is a skein, uh, this is also from us, a skein of Swagger Garn Opal Smile Yarn in the... In Zuken. In Zuken colorway, which is German for delight. So who is the winner of this? Ryder Darling. Congratulations. So, again, Bubby's Mom 77, Jessie's Girl 84, Army Tink 08, Bolt Cupcakes, AZ Nitwit, Elle McCall, Phoenix Fire, The Baby Lady 1990, Mother Z, K2P2 Mama, Whistlin' Liz, A1 Dolan, and Ryder Darling, PM Me Java Pearl on Ravelry with um, your name and mailing address. If it's um, a physical prize, if you're one of the three winners of the Knitting in France stitch markers, tell me your preference order, um, or if you won something. Um, digital just let me know you saw this and i'll make sure it gets gifted to you thanks so much to our um prize donors y'all are amazing thank you so much for supporting the podcast this way all right we're ready to move on to another segment um i forgot to say if you are a prize winner you have 30 days to claim your prize or you forfeit it so from the time this goes live on thursday the 8th of september you have 30 days to claim your prize okay now we're really going to move on to the next segment And now we are going to talk about our September, October, November artistic autumnal cow. Right. So this started on the 1st of September and it runs through the 30th of November. It's for any project that you knit, crochet, we or spin that you can convince us is related to autumn. Uh, no whips are allowed. You have to start your project the 1st of September or later and finish it the 30th of November. The only exception... By the 30th of November. What did I say? On the... Yeah. By the... Sorry about that. The only exception to this is if you started my Gilmore Girls Inspired Where You Lead I Will Follow Socks in August for the um, Gilmore Girls Cow that we're doing with Jilly of the Knitting Broomstick podcast, as long as you finish them 
by the 30th of September, you can enter that whip into this cow, but you have to finish them by the 30th of September. Okay. Um, but feel free to poly dip in other cows. That's totally fine. Uh, every project that you finish and post counts as one entry into the giveaway. You have to be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast group on Ravelry to participate. You need to post your, a photo of your FO in the FO thread in our Ravelry group. And the hashtag for this uh, cow is GGK Autumnal 16. We'll lock the thread the morning of the 1st of December and draw winners on the next podcast after that. You'll have 30 days to claim your prize. There is a chatter thread. Uh, it's the first podcast of the month, so we talk about the prizes in detail. Do you want to do back and forth? Sure. Uh, so from Jilly, who is vegan Jilly, a skein of opal sweet and spicy in the Schwarz Kummel colorway. Yep. And then also from Jilly uh, is three skeins of Fiber Lady Macacot, which is a 70% bamboo, 30% cotton yarn in the relaxing colorway. A Fia Hummingbird Pretty Cheap Project Bag from Julia, who is numerous. Um, two XO greeting cards and the XO um, pattern from Edinburgh Yarn Festival and as well are um, the two Gilmore Girls postcards from the Gilmore Girls kit that I did earlier this year. Three XO greeting cards and the XO pattern from Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And finally, a skein of Lang Yarns Jawal Magic in the such descriptive 84.0013 colorway. Um, if you would like to donate a prize for the autumnal cow, PM me, Java Pearl on Ravelry, or email us at geekygirlsknit at gmail.com. That's right. Dammy, we have a few people who finished projects already for this cow. Why don't you give them a shout out? Okay. Crazy Knitting Fool, Crouching Cheese, Cosmic, Little Angel SG2, Mantha Mac times two, Mother Z times six, Natalu Kathleen, and Rainbow Ange. Great job, everybody. I just tried to uh, pearl into the row below. That's not what's supposed to happen. So great job, and you've got plenty of time, so keep up the good work and get those projects posted. All right, let's move to the next segment. And now we're going to talk about our Gilmore Girls cow. Yes, so this is a cow, as I mentioned earlier, that we are co-hosting with Jilly, uh, who is vegan Jilly on Ravelry of the Knitting Broomstick podcast. Um, it started on the 1st of August, and it runs through the end of the month, the 30th of September. It's for any project that you knit, crochet, weave, or spin that you can convince us is related to Gilmore Girls. No whips are allowed August 1st or later and finished by the 30th of September, but you can poly dip in other cows as long as it meets the rules. Um, so every project you finish and post counts as one entry into the giveaway, with the exception of if you knit my Where You Lead I Will Follow Gilmore Girls Inspired Socks, you can post those a second time in the FO thread, and there's a post uh, near the top that shows you how to do that. Um, you have to be a member of both groups, the Geeky Girls Knit podcast group and the Knitting Broomstick Ravelry group. The chatter thread is in Jilly's group in the Knitting Broomstick group. The FO thread is in our group, the Geeky Girls Knit podcast group. Um, the hashtag is Gilmore GGK TKB, which is Gilmore Geeky Girls Knit, the Knitting Broomstick. Um, we will lock the thread the morning of the 1st of October and draw winners on our next podcast after that. Um, and Julie then will also announce the winners on her next podcast, but you'll have 30 days from the date our podcast episode goes live to claim your prizes, uh, to claim your prize if you're a winner. Speaking of prizes, let's run through these right quick. You want to start? Sure. One skein of Regia World College color in the exam colorways and two Gilmore Girls postcards. Yep. A Luzilla school, Skull 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 Project Bag donated by Julia, uh, who's in Emory Center Ravelry, and two Gilmore Girls postcards. Two Gilmore Girls bookmarks from the Oi and Poodle shop and a copy of CC's Where You Lead, I Will Follow Socks. Pattern. Um, Luke, a Luke Steiner planner clip from the Oi in the Poodle shop and a copy of my Gilmore Girls inspired sock pattern. Um, a skein of Gilmore Girls themed hand dyed yarn from Shannon of Yarn at Home Mom. A project bag from Trish of Yarn Seller Studios. A skein of yarn from Knitting in France in, on the Sparkles base in the Something About CC colorway and two stitch markers from Boga. Who's Boga? Yep. 
and also from Boga of Knitting in France, a knitting accessories kit that includes stitch markers, a knitting needle holder, a pattern tamer, and a mini emergency uh, crochet hook to pick up drop stitches. Uh, a project bag and stitch marker set from Michelle of Maple Moose Fibers. A skein of yarn from Michelle Mathias of Misha's Obsessions in the I Can't, I Have to Study, Rory-inspired colorway. Um, two winners will each win the Rory Gilmore Hat Pattern Series ebook donated by Marjan, who is Loose's Art. And finally, a limited edition Coffee, Coffee, Coffee Gilmore Girls Inspired Drawstring Project Bag from George Ann of Stitching Plaza, the Stitching Plaza. Um, so thank you so much to our prize donors for that. We appreciate that so much. Dammy, we had some people finish projects this week, so why don't you give them a shout out? Missy K. Schmidt, MV Knits, Shirley Murley times two, Strings Attached, Tui? Tui, that's what Tui. I would say. And VT Kimmy Kim. Great job, everybody. So keep working on those projects. Um, you have, I'm looking at the calendar on the wall across the room. 23 days. You have three weeks from Friday to finish your projects. Um... And coming up in December and January, we're going to co-host another cow with Jilly, a white Christmas-inspired cow. All right, let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, part of our show where you ask us things and we answer them. That's right. So what is this week's question, Dami? This week's question comes from Amber, who is Devious Angel from Florida. It's for you. Yes. As a fibromyalgia sufferer, do you have any tips or tricks on being able to knit comfortably during a fibro flare? Sometimes it feels like the only thing I can accomplish on really bad days, but even then it tires me out or makes my tender joints hurt worse. No, the, she's talking about the points. Oh. The, the, the pain, there's, there's points on your body, which that is how they, that's one of the tests for fibromyalgia is if those points, pressure points on your body are tender. She has a second question as well, but it's not related to this topic, so we're going to wait and answer it next week. So, I... First off, I'm very sorry that you're having to deal with fibromyalgia, Amber. It's it's not a... It, yeah, it's tough, and I really... Yeah, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. I am a bit lucky because I, um, my pain tends to be more in my back and hips and shoulders and not into my arms and hands. So that helps. But I do recognize that when I am knitting with a heavier weight yarn with bigger needles, that that does tend to cause me more problems. So I try to have projects of different weights of yarn and different size needles going so that I can um, move to another project if I start having issues. So I 99.9999% I, of the time I have a pair of socks on the needles, um, which is my go-to because it's not heavy to hold. Um, the yarn is very light. The needles are very small. Um, I also have obviously my zigzag blanket always going, which still uses a fingering weight yarn, but a little bit bigger needles. Um, but I try to have varying, um, varying projects so that I can move to a different one if I start having issues. Um, I also, um, try to make it a point to stretch out my hands and my wrists and um, just do li little bits of stretching every like hour or so just to um, keep the joints loose and everything. Um, another thing that I would pay attention to is your posture when you're knitting. I know for me that if I am just sitting in bed knitting I tend to start hurting a lot faster than if I'm sitting in a supportive chair with my feet up. Um, so that's something else I pay attention to. Um, 
trying to think if there's anything else. Don't I, I don't I don't recommend trying to push through the pain because then it just ends up even worse. So if you're hurting, you need to stop. Um, I use arnica gel quite often at, uh, on, because that tends to help with the with the pain. Um, rubbing that on. Is there anything else that you can think of that I do? I think that's everything. So those would be my suggestions. And obviously with fibromyalgia, it's a disease that it's different for every single person. So um, be kind to yourself and um, I'm not a medical professional, so I'm just giving you my own experiences. Um, but I hope that helps, Amber, um, because I totally understand needing something to engage your, your mind and hands when you're not feeling well. So um, I hope that answered your question. So if somebody has a question for us, what should they do, Dammy? Go to our Ask the Geek Girl site in our Ravelry group and post it. That's right. And we will answer Amber's second question next week because it's on a different topic. So, all right, let's move on to the next segment. Now we have a review and giveaway. Yes. So my friend Kathleen Dames, um, who is a designer, contacted me about us reviewing a brand new project that she is doing with Ann Podlisak. Is that how you would say it? That's what I would say. And it is a new quarterly magazine publication called Filament and it features um, women's garments and accessories. So this is the very first edition, number one, fall 2016. That it's the color of that sweater is just is what's washing it out. <laughs> um, so this is in this issue they share a modern take on classic 1930s style, and I um, I really like how they have it set up. The it's so bright it's like reflecting my glasses. It's set up very similar to Pom Pom Quarterly with the. Uh, big pictures of all the projects, all the patterns at the beginning, and then all the pattern stuff at the end. So there are technically 10 patterns in here, but there's two sets of two patterns, so it's like eight overall. Um, so let's just go through them right quick. First up we have the beaten, which was what was on the cover. It's a bottom-up seamless pullover with cables and a shawl collar. I know it's hard to see that because of washing it out. I think this one reminds me, I mean, not the collar, but the cabling reminds me kind of of the Watson sweater that you did. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me when we get to your favorite. Okay. Next up is Bittersweet, which is a bottom-up seamless cardigan with twisted stitch yoke. I love the color of that one, especially. I like the um, button detail on the sleeves on this one. Mm -hmm. And then this is the first set. This is called Bonnie, and it's a top-down I-cord tam and gloves with chevron pattern. It's really cute. And then we have Claudette which is a top-down cardigan with very lace detail. If I can get it close enough, you can get, see that. And then we have a shawl, the Copperfield, which is a top-down triangle shawl with double moss and wheat sheaves. I like this one. It's really pretty. I love big shawls, though, so. And then we have the Lombard, which is a bottom-up semi-seamless semi pullover with chevron detail. I like the neckline on that one especially. Yeah. That's really pretty. And then we have Milkweed, which is a pair of cuff-down socks with a flat heel and wide toe, and it's um, got Milkweed lace detail pattern on it. And those shoes are way cute, too. 
<laughs> Not that I could wear them, but yeah, they're really cute. This is my favorite. Oh, I like it. Oh, okay. I see, and we didn't even compare notes ahead of time. This is the other set. This is the Rumble Seat. It's a seamless double cowl and mitts with cluster stitch. I really, really like that. I might have to knit that cowl. I need to look and see what um, weight of yarn. Um, I really like their sizing. For example, on the Beaten, which was the very first sweater, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven sizes from 28 inch to 52 and three quarter inch. Um, and I like, without showing all the detail, but I like how they have the, the charting set up like with all the charts in that one spot, but still they've made really good use of space in, in this to make it not have to be so many extra pages of um, patterning stuff. Um, what else? The one thing I wish they would have done, and it's probably on the pattern pages, they tell you what yarn they're using, but they don't tell you what weight of yarn that is. Mm. So I wish that that would be, that was included in here because that would have been helpful. Um, but the photography is beautiful and very much in line with their theme. Um, What do you, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, nothing besides what you already said. Okay. Yeah, I really, really, really like this cow. Let's see. I bet we can look over here on the pattern page because I want to know what weight of yarn the um, rumble seat cow is done in. Hold that thought. Worsted. It's lovely. I really, really, really like it. And then at the end, I like that they have, I meant to show that at the beginning. Um, remind me and I'll go back and do it. Um, they've got like all of the abbreviations and then they have a pictorial table of contents. Um, let me get back here to the beginning because I didn't show it and I meant to. It's almost at the very beginning. Hold that thought. Almost there. They also, their table of contents at the front has the name and then just a, just a little detail about each of the patterns. So, um, yeah, I like that too, that they offer both, you know, a text table of contents, but also the pictorial one at the end. Mm -hmm. I think it's a lovely, lovely publication great work Anne and Kathleen um, and they have been very very generous and offered to give away an ebook copy um, to one of y'all so what you need to do is visit the filament number one page on Ravelry and see the 10 patterns and choose your favorite and then come to our Ravelry group and tell us which one is your favorite in the giveaway thread and we'll keep this giveaway open for two weeks until we record episode 210. And um, yeah, thanks Anne and Kathleen for sending us filament number one to review. You should definitely check it out. It is a lovely, lovely new publication. All right, I think that's everything for this segment. Let's move on to the next one. We made it to the end of the show. Yep. Okay, a few um, announcements. I am working with Lola from Third Vault Yarns and Sam from Knit Run Dig to put together a Battlestar Galactica inspired kit. Um, we So this is a new fandom for us to work with. And so we're trying to gauge how much interest there is in it. So we have a poll set up at tinyurl.com slash bsg. Poll. Battlestar Galactica poll, P O L L. Um, so the kit will be, include a skein of yarn from Third Vault Yarns, a project bag from Knit Run Dig, a sock pattern from me, and goodies. 
and it will cost $62 US plus shipping. Pre-orders are going to start on Sunday the 18th of September and will ship no later than Thursday the 20th of October. So um, could you please go over to tinyurl.com slash bsgpoll and just let us know if you're interested in that or not because we're trying to gauge how many kits to offer. So thank you if you've already done that. Just a reminder that our fourth Potiversary giveaway is still ongoing. Um, we will draw for winners next week. And we want you to tell us in the giveaway thread on Ravelry your favorite moment from our past four years or your favorite episode. And we have three different prizes. Um, do you want to start with the first one? Um, five skeins of picked wool of the Andes bulky. Three in the crush, crush colorway, one in the wine colorway, and one in the Wally Baby colorway. And then um, donated by Julia, who's Nimrus on Ravelry, a fish project bag. And one skein of Natalie Furby yarn, 100 grams, 330 meters in the hug colorway. That's right. So make sure you enter um, on um, Ravelry and you might be a winner. We'll draw for those winners next week. Uh, I don't think we have anything else other than our normal stuff. So just a reminder about the 52 Weeks of Charity Cow. Um, that is ongoing. The details are in the Ravelry group and we talk about it on the second podcast of every month. Um, how can you support the podcast? There are three main ways. First up is Patreon, which is a site where you can pledge a certain amount each month for your favorite creative people, the podcasters, artists, etc. Um, and there are reward levels based on your pledge. Uh, if you want more details on that, go to patreon.com slash geekygirlsknit. Yep. You want to talk about the next one? Um, or there is, if you'd like to make a one-time donation, there is a PayPal button in our sidebar on our website. Yep, and also if you click through on our website to Amazon.com or .co.uk, they give us a little money back based on what you purchase. And it doesn't cost you anything extra, and it pays for shipping for prizes, because like we have this whole thing of prizes to send out this next week or so. So, um... If you can assist us in that way, we appreciate it a lot. If you can't, no worries. Don't worry about it. Uh, but thank you to those of you who are able to assist us in that way. All right, I think that's everything. So why don't you tell them where to find us online? You can find us at geekygirlsnet.com. There, there are links to everywhere else we are online. YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. That's right. And with that, we'll tell you goodbye. We hope you have a lovely, lovely rest of your week. Happy knitting. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. something sure introduce me oh yes <laughs> and now for your listening pleasure we have Dammy with her rendition of what are you singing part of believe part of believe <laughs> and finding neverland i see it all around us in every single color and every dimension Crowns the reinvention And if it is black Then it's white And when it is dark Then it's light So fill in all the spaces With imaginary places It's so frustrating When no one else sees Everything you see So for now It is just an illusion Confusion Unless you're someone Who believes Ta-da I don't, you don't know the lyrics to Peter's part, so no, I, I can't don't. sing the rest. Sorry. Yay. Yay. All right, we'll talk to y'all next week.